Assalamu alaikum. Hello viewers. Today we will be discussing about design of a Pelton wheel. This is a impulse type of turbine that is used to produce energy from high head water or high head fluids. When the impulse action is imparted on the blades of the wheel, it produces rotational motion and that's converted into a mechanical energy to convert electricity. And the input energy in, here, in this case is hydraulic energy. So for that, the main difficult part of it is the design of the buckets of it. And these are of a little interesting shape and it's a little difficult to produce the shapes. So we'll be simplifying those shapes into some of the known geometry that is available to us. So for that, we just take some of the planes and that would be referenced to the top planes. We take three planes actually. And in this case, in the top plane, we start a simple sketch. Produce a rectangle. It says point one five by twenty one meters. <coughs> now we fill up the corners. In this case, the radius would be sufficiently long. I don't think this would be enough. And now exit the sketch and produce another sketch on the top plane. That would be similar to this one. Similarly, we now fill up these corners. The radius would be a little smaller. Let's say it's 0.015. Much better. And now we need a guide curve that would be guiding our feature to the correct path. For that, we draw another sketch on the front plane. That will be a three point arc. Our shape of the buckets will be going like this. So now we'll go for the loft. Choose the corresponding points that would be connecting. And choose the guide curves as these two curves. And then go for the shell feature. The shell thickness will be 0 0.003. It doesn't choose any face to remove, so that's it. There is a uh, one side of the bucket. Now we just mirror this thing out. For that, we would need another reference geometry, and the reference plane would be the front plane. Hit OK and just mirror this entire thing out. The reason for that not being much because the plane is slightly a little too distant. So we just edit this plane. That's a four five. Maybe 
four eight. Much better as it would have to go through some of the thickness of this wall. So now we mirror it again. The plane would be this one and the body would be entire this one. This would increase the thickness out here that is necessary for the impulse action to be sustained. So we need a cut away out here which is necessary for the flow not to be interrupted by the consecutive buckets. So we start another sketch on the uppermost plane. Make a center line that would go through this line. And now produce a three point cutaway. Mirror this and go for the cut. Before that, we just enclose the sketch for ease of our operation. Select through all. And the fluid would be hitting up to this point. And the fluid will be passing through these sides. And now we go for the connecting parts that would be holding these two buckets with the wheel. For that we start another sketch on the front plane. We need to be assured that everything is being in contact, otherwise the merge results won't be able to rebuild itself. Go for three point arc. see how this works make it as mid plane since it's a little too high we just edit the sketch There is no gap in this side since the modules in all is on and there is no rebuild error so we can assume that there is no gap and if you want you can just edit it out a little more to be a further ensure there isn't any gap. There. Much better now we just mirror this side to the, for that one as well. Mirror plane is with this one, features with this one. There, much better. Our buckets, we just hide all the planes. And usually they are connected to the wheel with rivets and for that we just go for some sketching and this was just for the convenience we just go for this face and produce a sketch for the hexagonal rivets and for making things a little Realistic, let's just make some of those reference geometries. Mirror 
this about this line and extrude them in both the directions. There, much better. And since we're just making things a little bit simplified, so we'll not be going for the exact dimensionings and design some of the parts, assuming the dimensions. And now we just make the wheel shape and the wheel thickness would be the distance between these two sides with a little bit of clearance. So let's measure this. And from this point to this point. So the distance is 0 0.07 meters. We save this. Build on wheel bucket. And open another file. In the front plane, we make a revolving sketch. of which the line would be 0.05 or 0.06 so we just draw some arbitrary lines and make some of the dimensions and this would be 0 0.07 or 0 0.06 make these three things asymmetric control plus all these all these three we mirror this entire thing with respect to this line better this part would be for area of the bearings or the area where the shaft would be connected because this little portion would be carrying most of the loads so let's just dimension them a little more we'll be making them as 0 0.05 Restrict this area as well. Say point zero three, maybe a little more or less zero two, because this area would hardly take mm, any of the loads. I could just make these three points symmetric similarly, and another dimension to be added is this one. This would be the shaft radius. So one point five. Oops. Point zero one five. Let's say this make it point one meters. Make these two equal.
and so this one to point zero eight similar to this portion is point zero two would be good enough for us. Now we go for the revolve, but for that before that we make a central line as reference geometry. That the entire thing would be revolving about this thing. Now we save this one as well as Pelton V1. And now make assembly from this part. Insert the runner component looks like this isn't quite a bit good fit so we just enhance the dimensions we just go back to the main wheel with the sketch make this dimension as so one meter and this one as 0.95 of the meters we make this as point two see how it looks this shaft is gonna be too small so we just enhance it once again that's much better I think but before that let's just edit the sketch and lessen these dimensions a little bit make this point 8 and this one as point 7 let's see how this thing look, look, looks like now yeah much better now we move this part now we just go for the mates and for that we choose this top plane to be parallel with this face and we go for another advanced mate would be the symmetric mate in this case we choose the symmetry plane to be the right plane and the planes which would be symmetric about this plane would be these two they're much better and now for another mate we we'll try to make this plane to be at a constant distance from the same top plane. And the standard mate would be this distance mate. And say distance would be 0 0.7 and 4 how about that and they're much better looks pretty good enough for us now we just make some of the patterns of it and that would be circular patterns 
the parameter would be this circle, any of the circle you choose, and the component would be this one. Now we choose how many of it we need. There is an optimum number of number of runners for every Pelton wheel specification. You may just go for any of the fluid mechanics or fluid machineries books for the further information about it. So we'll be just leaving it 15 for the time moment. And in this case, you need to consider that when the jet hits this face, it does not rebound to the back surface of this other runner and neither that it may be wasted and for for that removal of wastages we have cut it this face out and this is our pelton wheel and if we now wish to assign some of the materials we just go to the material out here edit the material in most of the cases you might just see steel alloys or cast alloys we just go for the car cast carbon steel at the moment we apply it and turn it the appearance is modified and in this case we assign the material as AISI steel as stainless steel the appearances are updated out here as well and if you want furthermore we just could apply some of the colors add some metal and steel Let's see how it looks. We could just modify the colors as well. Let's say we want it painted. Car paints. Go for the entire part. And our buckets are updated out here. And if you want the wheel to be colored as well, we can go for that as well. Let's see how many colors we have. Uh, say we wish to go for somewhat like gold. And uh, that's our goldish looking Pelton wheel. And if you wish to go for the rendering, you can go for the renderings. And for the rendering approaches, you may just go for the previous tutorials that is available in our channel. And that would be all for this one. Hope you have enjoyed it. Hit the like button below if uh, you have. Please subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.